I think when we're designing a new game, one thing we always try to start with is thinking about the player's perspective. Because um, I think a lot of times, as a designer, you kind of start with the mechanics, and then that leads to like the dynamics, like in, in terms of how players are interacting with the systems, and then that leads to like the overall user experience. And I think one thing we always try and start with is starting from the very end and thinking, what is the like experience that players are feeling, and then working backwards to figure out, okay, what like how are they engaging with systems, and then what are the mechanics that kind of shape that. Um, and so I think from the beginning, we wanted to start with again, capturing that feeling of you're trying to do your job, you're just trying to get through your tasks, um, but you're just always being pulled out from it. Um, and kind of really capturing that like emotional struggle that I think uh, developers tend to have with just being super frustrated and uh, in terms of, you know, you're working right in the middle of something and you're about to solve something and then you get pulled away to go feed a hamster or something like completely ridiculous. So um, I think for us starting with the player's perspective um, and then working to figure out what are the mechanics and what's the narrative and everything that would support that design. Basically each week we sort of plan out our tasks in hack and plan, which is basically just like a productivity tool. And then from there, yeah, we get into Unity. Uh, we have 3D modelers. Uh, Nina was working on the 3D models for the game in sort of inside of Maya. Uh, and then I do most of the programming uh, along with uh, Drew and Taylor. Uh, we all use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Um, and then Unity is a really great engine where it just has like a visual interface for you to drag around objects. Um, you can attach components. Uh, and you basically script everything out of uh, Visual Studio and C Sharp. And then we were deploying it to Azure. So we had some HTML um, that was being created after the build. And then we were hooking it up to Azure and hooking up to Okta. I guess that whole stack was completely new to me. I had never really done any networking or like web programming before. So getting up and running in Unity and connecting out to PlayFab was super easy. You basically just download their SDK. They have like a whole API interface that lets you have like host data on their server and you can pull it down really easily. You can connect uh, user accounts uh, anonymously uh, through a GUID system. And then when we linked in with Okta through their API to get user data, uh, we were able to use an OpenID Connect that linked to the PlayFab so that we could have the data on PlayFab store the user's save data and then link that to their Okta accounts. Uh, and then so you could play across device, which was really cool. Uh, but it was a really easy system to get up and running, I guess. We, we work in both. Um, we're actually working on a number of Unity projects right now, uh, and then also an Unreal project. Um, and we've been working with Unity longer. Um, I think in general, Unity is typically more accessible to kind of get into. Um, we've definitely, the, the learning curve of kind of getting into Unreal and the, the mix of blueprints and the C++ code and all that stuff has been an interesting mix for us. But um, I think in terms of preference, uh, you know, both engines are super useful and have amazing features across the board. Um, I think some, projects are better suited uh, for one engine versus the other. Um, certainly working on a mobile game or a web game or uh, you know a game like Code Tycoon I think makes sense in um, in Unity. But you know when we're working on our more cinematic uh, like third person adventures or anything like that, um, I think Unreal and the graphical fidelity that it provides and um, just all the tools that we can use uh, to create like a more cinematic experience. Um, I think works really well for us. I think Unity has a lot of good features um, that are more suited towards like what Tom was saying that are more web-based or 2D. Um, Unreal is definitely more of a 3D engine. Unity is as well, but I feel like the 2D capabilities are better in Unity. Um, I've also worked in Game Maker Studio recently, and that I really like for 2D. Um, it's quite different actually from the other two engines. It's kind of hard for me to get into even though I'm really used to Unity and Unreal. I started working in Pico 8, which is, uh, for those that don't know, it's sort of a 
Uh, it's kind of trying to emulate a like an NES sort of architecture. Uh, so you're developing 8-bit games, and the engine is itself the engine as well as like a storefront to host all the games for free. And you can download games, see everyone's source code. Uh, you can play around. You get to make the music in there, the sprites. Um, you program the game, uh, and that's really cool. That's definitely really interesting. Um, I really like the low-level stuff. I'm actually really interested in making my own game engine. And I've been following the Handmade Hero series, which is making a game from scratch in C with no libraries or anything. So that's definitely more akin to the lower level stuff that I'm interested in. I would say if you're getting started in game development, it depends on what aspect of game development you want to do as well. If you're looking for programming, I can definitely speak the best for programming. Tom might have better advice for art or design or something. Definitely start small. I Even now, I keep to this advice, and I'm really bad at it. I always have really grand ideas that I want to go and pursue, but it's just really hard to keep up with something if you're having to learn every step of the process. If you're only learning maybe like one or two things, uh, it's definitely a lot harder to get bogged down. So starting really small and also, um, I think learning inside of an engine is really good. Using something like Unity would be great to get started in. But then also going back and learning more of like the fundamentals of just base, um, base computer science so that you're more versatile of a developer and you know not just how Unity's API works, but maybe you might know how it works beneath the code, um, which is really helpful if you're trying to become really serious about game development. So. I worked, I think, primarily on like the content um, implementation side of uh, game development instead of the um, the more online integrated side. And I think one of the biggest challenges that we had was trying to figure out how to implement the narrative content um, because trying to figure out how to do narrative in a way that is easy to update the, the text and the copy um, and then also figuring out how to really f have a flexible system for firing those off. Uh, again, the design of Code Tycoon is really interesting because there are simulation aspects and then which are very like non-linear kind of free form. And then you have these linear narrative aspects. And so trying to figure out like how to, to wrangle all the narrative bits, store it within the game engine and then have it fire off when it's supposed to. And then also having effects on your stats um, whenever you choose certain options. Having all that system working um, was something that we developed over pretty much the entire course of development. Um, and I think the, the solution we ended up coming up with was using, um, I feel like we had actually a number of scriptable objects set up where we could um, basically have text objects. And then we, had a, we ended up coming up with a really nice system where you could have a description, and then you would have the different uh, like options if it was a, a multi-choice response that, uh, that we'd present to the player. And then within those, we'd have um, you know the metrics that it would affect. And so we had this, this really nice data structure visually represented inside of Unity using scriptable objects. Um, and we could use that. We also had another scriptable object system for, for calling those events. <laughs> and so we had kind of like these layers of um, of data structures that would uh, let us organize all the data. And I think it took quite a while to figure out um, how to organize all that stuff. But in the end, I think we ended up with a pretty solid modular system that let us basically implement, um, I'd say the majority of the narrative content, I would say it probably took maybe like three or four days to get like the the bulk of like the entire narrative um, into the game because we had a really robust system for that. So uh, that's probably that was, from my perspective, the biggest challenge, um, but is also probably the thing I'm most proud of for this project. I was primarily working on like not much of the game stuff for like the latter couple months of development um, and focusing more on the online stuff. And I think the hardest technical challenge for me was 
in like the last month of the project, I wanted to re-architect the saving so that we could properly save all your data locally to your cookies as well as to PlayFab. And then based on if you had signed in with Okta and if you had pre-existing save data, uh, pull down the online save data and then sync the two together. Um, and I don't think it would have been that hard of a problem if we had just architected it well from the beginning and saved data well from the beginning. Uh, but we weren't really thinking of that as, I guess, a high priority. And so we had like a lot of, we when we re-implemented the event saving, we were saving like each event's name and GUID as like a string. And then when I was re-implementing it, I wanted to save the data in, like sparsely so that we wouldn't be using a ton of data on the server. So I had to kind of re-implement it back into a state where we could be, um, you know, sort of sending up like bitmaps of uh, indices for like events in arrays, as well as we had like a whole nother classification of like these world events that aren't. Uh, through like the normal event uh, queue. So handling those separately and making sure that those could be handled pretty sparsely as well to make sure that we're not using so much data that you'd have to pull down tons and upload tons and have to check against all these different factors. Um, it would be like really easy to just pull down a bitmap and then compare the two. Um, so that was probably the hardest aspect for me. For me, I think it was getting Unity to interact with the browser. Um, you know, Unity doesn't have really anything built in for OAuth or for any type of authentication concepts. Um, so we kind of had to build it ourselves uh, on that side. So it, 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 it took the creation of, um, of a, a JavaScript library that allowed the C-sharp uh, you know, code to talk to this library that then talked to the JavaScript and the HTML. Um, and so that in itself was, was painful to implement um, and then it was really painful to debug. Like even to this day, uh, Chris and I get the joy of of trying to figure out why we're getting a specific error when we can't use debug points, when we can't step through the actual code uh, because you know we we can't run it locally. We have to host it uh, in order to be able to have all the JavaScript pieces work together properly. So um, it's 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 a little bit painful, and and um, it, it does go to show you know why we're wanting to spend more time uh, on security within uh, you know things like Unity and Unreal. Um, more more tools would, would definitely, I think, be helpful there. But um, I, I think for me, that was the biggest challenge.